Have you just got the DJI Mini 3 Pro or is it sitting wrapped up under the Christmas tree and you can't wait to get your hands on it on Christmas day? Well, when you do, there are a few settings that the first time you use this drone, you should turn on and a few you should turn off to make sure you get the best possible quality and flight experience from this drone. Now, if this is the first video of mine you have ever watched, my name's Matthew and I create videos to help you get more cinematic videos and better images from your drone things like best settings that you should use and tips and tricks. And if you want to follow along and see some of them videos, I recommend you click that subscribe button and make sure that notification bell is on so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. All right, let's take a look at the first thing you should turn on. Now, if this is literally the first time you have turned your drone on, and when you purchased the drone, you got DJI Care Refresh with it. That's DJI's version of insurance. Then you need to make sure that you bind the controller to the drone so that you get flyaway coverage. If you don't bind the controller to the drone, you will not get flyaway coverage. It takes a few seconds to do, and it's super straightforward. So if you've already went in and hit go fly in the drone, you need to go back to the home screen. And you do that by tapping this little back icon on the top left of the screen. And then what you wanna do is you want to click profile, and then go to device management. Now in here you will see two options, account and device and value added service. You want to go to value added service and then you want to press the button to bind the controller and quickly follow the on-screen steps. And once you do that, you will then be fully covered with DJI Care Refresh. Okay, before we take a look at the next setting you should turn on, I'm just going to put the drone into the air. So to make sure you are getting the best quality video from the DJI Mini 3 Pro, you want to make sure that dual native ISO is running. Now dual native ISO runs automatically at certain frame rates. Now what is dual native ISO? It's a system that automatically combines two ISO settings, a low gain for bright areas and a high gain for dim areas to capture more details and give you more dynamic range. Now this system only runs at 30 FPS or lower and it will give you much improved video. So you want to make sure that you have on by tapping the resolution and FPS button on the bottom right of the screen. And then next to the frame rates where dual native ISO will run, you'll see a small HQ icon. So you can see that at 30 FPS or lower, dual native ISO will be on because of that HQ icon. But anything above 30 FPS, such as 48, 50 or 60 FPS, the drone will not be using that dual native ISO system. So you want to make sure that you have your drone set to 30 FPS or lower for the highest quality and most dynamic range in your videos. Now, once you've set the resolution, the next setting that you want to check is if whenever you're changing into other video modes, such as quick shots. Now, although I have my resolution and frame rate set to 4K 30, which again, you can see in the bottom right of the screen, whenever you switch into quick shots mode for the first time, you will see this has an independent resolution and FPS setting. And so it's reverted back to 1080p at 30 FPS. And if you don't notice this and you go out and have an awesome day capturing lots of quick shots, you'll be disappointed when you come back home, look at them and think, why are they, why are they so low quality? And that's because you won't have realized that that resolution will have changed. So you want to go into the resolution and FPS in these modes and again, set it to the resolution and FPS you wish. Now that's quick shots. You can see I've just changed that, but if I actually go to master shots, again, you can see that reverts to a default value. Now you only need to do this once the first time you use these modes, but make sure you set your resolution and frame rate for each mode. Now the next setting you will want to change if you want the highest quality images from your DJI Mini 3 Pro is to enable JPEG and RAW. Now raw images just capture so much more data and information, allowing you to do things like recover highlights, boost shadows, and in general, have a better looking image after editing it in post. Now with the DJI Mini 3 Pro, you can capture either JPEG or JPEG and RAW. Now with JPEG and RAW, you get the best of both worlds. You get that quick JPEG image ready to go to post on social media, for example, and you also get the raw image so you can edit it in software like Lightroom later. Then make sure you're capturing images in JPEG and RAW in photo mode. You want to go down to the bottom right of the screen where it says format and make sure you have selected JPEG and RAW. Now in photo mode, there is a second setting you will want to change and that is the aspect ratio. 
Now at the minute you can see we're capturing images in 16 by 9 but you want to capture your images with the full size of the camera sensor in 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Now to do that you want to go to the settings menu when in photo mode so you want to tap the three dots in the top right of the screen and then under camera and under the size option you want to change from 16 by 9 to 4 by 3. This means when you take a photo, you're using the full camera's sensor, and you're also capturing more information at the top and bottom of the image. You can always create a 16 by nine image from this, and having more at the top and bottom of your image gives you more flexibility to crop and resize your photo in post. Now, before we take a look at the next setting you should change as a new flyer, I just wanted to talk about today's video sponsor, which is Wirestock. Wirestock is a tool that helps you take the clips you capture with drawing such as the DJI Mini 3 Pro and easily sell them as stock to potentially make a little bit of side income. It's as simple as uploading the drone clips you have captured to their website and they distribute it to all the major stock marketplaces. To make things even easier, you can use Easy Submission. And this takes all the pain of having to fill out all the metadata off each clip as they go through and do it all for you. This is great because you can focus on getting out there and getting the best clips possible. Edit it, upload it, and let Wirestock handle the rest. The best thing about Wirestock is that you don't need multiple accounts on all the stock marketplace websites. You only have one account and one dashboard to track everything, including how many downloads you have had, and more importantly, the earnings for each clip. Wirestock also automatically creates a portfolio page for you, and you can use this to sell your stock directly to potential buyers by sending them the link. So if you want to try making a little bit of side income with the footage and images you capture with your drone, then I recommend you head to Wirestock by using the link in the description and you can get started right now. Now the next thing you will want to turn on will help you expose your videos and images correctly and that basically means to make sure they are bright enough but not too bright where you lose some information such as having a totally white sky with no clouds in it and that is a histogram. Now to turn on a histogram again you want to go to the settings menu on the top right of the screen by pressing them three dots and under camera you want to scroll down to the histogram option and make sure you've turned that on. And then you will see this histogram appear on your main screen and you can click and drag this around and position it wherever you want. Now a histogram is basically a graph that represents the tones in an image. So you can see the highlights on the right side and the shadows on the left side and then everything in between. And this is really useful as mentioned for showing if your sky is completely blown out and clipped for example and it will show it on that graph. So let me very quickly explain to you how to use this so that you can use the histogram to get better quality videos and images. Now the idea with a histogram is that you want the majority of the graph to be in the center or spread across the center of the histogram. If there's too much to the right, you have a overexposed or too bright image. And if there's too much to the left, you have a too dark or underexposed image. So at the minute, this is a pretty good exposure. You can see most of the graph is in the center of that histogram. Now, if I make this image way too bright, what you'll see happens is that the majority of the graph moves over to the right side and starts to crush against that right side of the histogram. And this is your indication that you've overexposed the image. So you would want to pull back the exposure until the majority of that graph is in the center. Now, if I darken down this image, you can see that the graph crushes all the way over to the left. And this is your indication that you've underexposed the image. And again, you would want to bring up the brightness of your video until that graph moves back into the center. And this is super useful as an aid to make sure that you've exposed your video correctly. I find this is super useful on days where it's really bright. It's quite hard to see the screen to make sure that maybe you haven't overexposed your sky or all your wipes. You can use that histogram as a visual aid to make sure you've properly exposed your image. Now the next thing I recommend turning on is grid lines. Now if you go into your settings menu here, under camera again and scroll down, you can see we have three grid lines options. And you can turn on each one of these or a combination of the three of them or all three. Now this X or this dot is really useful for making sure that you have your subject in the center of the frame. So if I fly over here to this small building, let's say I want to do an orb around it. With this X on the screen and the center point, you can see it becomes really easy to see when you're drifting off center and really easy to see where the center of your image is to make sure that you've got the building or whatever your subject or point of interest is in the center of the frame at all times. So that X is super useful for that. If I go back into the settings and I turn the X and center point off and turn on this grid grid lines, 
you can see we have this three by three grid appear on the screen. Now this one is super useful for composing your shot and doing things like the rule of thirds. And here's what I find it super useful for. If you want to record a video and say your intended use of that video is to not only use it in its horizontal aspect ratio, but also to crop it down and post to create a Instagram or TikTok edit from it. So that's gonna be useful if there's times where you can't do one video, come back, put it into vertical or portrait mode and do a second video. Let's say you're only gonna get one opportunity to capture a moment. So you have to use that one video clip to create a horizontal and vertical video from it. You can use this grid to make sure that you have the focus of your video in that middle portion of the video so that if you do have to crop it down and post, you won't be clipping the sides of it out, for example. Now again, to make sure that you don't overexpose your image, which is super important because you have to remember if you overexpose your image, such as making your sky too bright, where all the clouds are just completely gone and the sky is completely white, you cannot recover that in a video editor. At least you can't do it easily without doing things like a sky replacement. So it's best to make sure that you capture all that information and don't overexpose your image when recording. And a really useful setting you can turn on to do that is overexposure warning. So if I pan up to the sky here, you can see all the clouds are in it, but let me overexpose the image a little bit so that I lose all that information in the sky. Now you can see all them clouds are gone because I have overexposed this image. And you might think this is really noticeable, but on a sunny day when you're not really concentrating and you're trying to get the shot as quick as possible, you may not notice this, but if you go into your settings, again, by tapping the top right of the screen and under camera, go down to overexposure warning and turn this on, you can see the drone does this really useful feature, which is on any area of your video that is overexposed, it will display this warning in the form of zebras. And now it's super noticeable that the sky is overexposed and I can reduce the exposure down until that overexposure warning or them zebras disappear. And you can now see that all that information has been recovered in that sky. And I know that that area won't be overexposed when I record. So in the settings menu under safety, if you scroll down to beneath the obstacle avoidance action, you will see an option called display radar map. And when this is enabled, any obstacles that the drone is detecting will be displayed on the radar map. So this is super useful to know what and where the drone is detecting when you're flying it around. And again, can just be another aid to make sure that you're flying the drone safely at all times. Now, the last thing I recommend that you set before every flight is the auto return to home height. Now, if you engage return to home by pressing and holding the return to home button to have the drone automatically come back to you, or you lose signal and the drone automatically engages return to home mode, it will rise up to a set height, fly back above you and then descend. Now, the height at which the drone raises up to is determined in the settings of the drone. So what you want to do is you want to press the settings button in the top right of the screen again. And under safety, if you scroll down, you will see auto return to home altitude. And you want to set this altitude to again, be higher than any of the obstacles around you. And that way you know that if return to home is engaged, that that drone will fly up and over them obstacles as it comes back to you. Super important setting. Now there's also a few settings I recommend you turn off or you want to make sure they are turned off and you haven't turned them on by accident. Now the first one is one I've seen catch a few people out. I get messages every now and then where someone says to me, is there something wrong with my drone? Is it faulty? I can fly up and down, forwards and backwards. I can rotate round, but the drone won't fly side to side. Is it faulty? Is there something wrong? And the answer is you've probably accidentally turned on disable sideways flight. Now, when you go into the settings menu under safety, if you have your drone set to bypass mode and bypass mode only, you will see this new option become available called disable sideways flight. And when you have this turned on, you can rotate your drone, you can fly it up and down forwards or backwards, but you can't fly it side to side. So if you're having that issue, you want to go in and make sure that you have disable sideways flight turned off. Now, the reason you might turn on disable sideways flight is let's say you're flying your drone through a narrow gap or you're flying it through an arch and you're finding it quite hard to keep the drone flying straight. Every time you fly the drone forward, it's wandering side to side. Well, by turning on disable sideways flight, that will make sure the drone flies as straight as an arrow, and this will help you fly through them narrow gaps or fly through arches, for example, without the risk of it wandering to the side.
Now the next thing I recommend you turn off is subject scanning. The subject scanning is a feature that when enabled, instead of having to draw a box over something that you want to track or do a quick shot off, the drone will automatically place a small plus icon over anything that it thinks it can track. And when you tap this, the drone will automatically apply a box around it. Now this can speed up the process of not having to draw the box around the things you want to track and it can also let you know on the screen what the drone thinks it can track and then once you see that plus icon you just simply tap on it. Now there's two reasons I recommend you go in and turn off subject scanning by going to the settings and under the control menu going down and turning off subject scanning. The first is that whenever you have subject scanning turned on, you can't actually use portrait mode on the DJI Mini 3 Pro. That option disappears off the screen. So if you don't see the portrait mode option, it's probably because you have subject scanning turned on. And the second is whenever you're flying your drone around and there's maybe a lot of people in the area or there's a lot of subjects that the drone thinks it can track, you'll start getting all these plus icons popping up on the screen. And I find that this can actually make the screen a little bit laggy as the drone's trying to detect all these subjects to put that plus icon over. So for them two reasons, I just recommend you turn it off and then whenever you want to do tracking off something such as yourself, you just draw the box over yourself. It only takes a few seconds. And also there's occasions where the drone won't recognize something that you want to track, such as buildings or points of interest. And so you have to draw the box over it anyway. Now something else I recommend you turn off to make sure that your videos play back smoothly on your computer or laptops, for example, is the video codec. Now you want to make sure that you're recording in H.264, not H.265, and you can do that by tapping the settings button, going to camera, and under coding format, make sure to select H.264. Now the reason why is that the H.265 codec, which is newer, compresses the video information more efficiently than H.264. And this results in smaller file sizes. But the benefits of the smaller file size come at a drawback of the fact that H.265 requires more processing power to play back. So what you might find is that if your laptop or computer isn't overly powerful, that it might struggle to play back that video or it might play it back fine whenever you're previewing it, but when it comes time to put it into your video editor to create sequences, then your computer will really start to struggle when it comes time to edit that footage. So you can negate all them issues by just making sure you record in H.264 format, and then you won't have any problems playing it back or editing it. So there you have it. Those are the settings you should turn on and some you should turn off as a new flyer to make sure you get the best videos and images and flight experience with this drone. Now, if you liked this video and you learned something new, please let me know by giving the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones and want to know how to get more cinematic videos and better images with your drone, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your drone game. Make sure to click that subscribe button and make sure the notification bell is checked so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you want to stick around and see a few more than now, here's a few I personally recommend. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.